Hey everybody, Rudy, Alpha Investments. Uh, excuse me, Rudy, have, have you, did you see the expected value of Thera? Like, um, okay, so I'm gonna make a video on this because I'm getting a bazillion messages. Uh, Rudy, will you please talk about the fact that, oh my, is this, is this, is this real? Is this really happening? You're pumping boxes that are going to zero? It's my fault? Okay. Uh, apparently the Theros collector's boxes uh, are destroying the standard Theros booster box value. Now, some people are saying, yup, the name Theros remains cursed and the expected value of these products <laughs> are getting destroyed. Ouch. So, the pretty much we have Theros Beyond Death just came out. Uh, people are blaming the collector's boxes or pointing fingers at the collector's boxes that the sheer volume of mythics and good pools have completely just crushed the secondary market for anything that has the mythic value because of the pool rates. Because of that, the Theros set has officially came out last Friday. Today is the filming of this video. It's a uh, Wednesday afternoon, so it's only been about five days since release. And they're estimating on like the Dawn Glare website that TCG mid is the metric. Um, is showing about $75 expected value for a box. TCG low is about $50 to $60. Okay, everybody understands the purpose of allocation period at the beginning of a release of all standard booster boxes. The purpose of Wizards purposely throttling the supply for a standard set is so that the expected value comes to the market, it flows through smoothly, the numbers kind of, everything just stabilize. We don't have extreme movements. So what I'm not understanding or what's scaring the living bejesus out of me is if the price of the regular box has already collapsed and we're at the not even seven days post official release, that's a really, really bad sign for how this product is going to sell. And I already know people in the comments section. Rudy, they called it Theros. Everybody got crushed the first time around, and they're getting double tapped like a zombie movie. I, I already see the comments, everyone, and that's cool. Um, ugh. Yeah, I mean, I, I, would, I would be lying if I didn't think the collector's boxes did it. I mean, we all think the collector's boxes are just destroying because you're injecting so many rares and mythics and extended arts and variants and foil of extended, non-foil of extended, constellation, uh, foil, constellation, non-foil. Like the variance, it, this is worse expected value and this is worse than the lottery period. Remember, the lottery cards back in the day from the Battle for Zendikar, Oath of the Gate Watch, the Kaladesh, Aether, Amonkhet, and Hour of Devastation, the, the market loved them because it made standard very cheap by skewing the, the, all the money cards into lottery cards for collectors and investors. So the theory was pretty impressive. The problem was, the real world unfolding didn't quite go the way it looked like in theory. It's one of those things where in Wall Street, if you, you go to school to get a corporate finance major, or you want to be an, an analyst or get your CFA or be a broker or whatever direction you want to go, you learn how to calculate the value of a stock. They teach you formulas about time, value of money, backdating future payments and dividends, the accounts payable, receivables, and learning about your EBITDAs. And, and then you realize in the real world, um, Tesla's worth $10 million a share, and it's all about emotion, fear, and you know that's really what drives Wall Street, not really formulas. So that's what I kind of think is happening here, is you know, it's really scary that Theros Beyond Death, regular booster boxes, the value is already in the 60s to 70s, depending if you want to use a TCG low or mid metric. Let's just use the mid metric. Um, you're at $75 a box. That's the lowest at the fastest rate I've ever seen. I've never seen a standard box. I don't even think Dragon's Maze at release was $75. I think Dragon's Maze was over 100 because it had two Shocklands per box. And believe it or not, at release, everybody, Dragon's Maze had a lot of mythics worth a lot of money. Between the Voice of Resurgences, there was a... God, there was a couple other creatures. There was some... Oh my God, it's going to drive me crazy now. There was a lot of good mythics. Oh, I think that was... Wasn't that Domri and Raul Zarek and the other guys? These were all like $10, $20, $30 mythics, plus Voice of Resurgence, plus... There were some other ones, some Master... Was it Master of Cruelties or something? I can't remember. There was a bunch of value in the set, but I've never seen it start this bad. 
So then people wanted me to bring up the next tier of this video. Uh, Rudy, um, uh, which, you know, I was going to make another video on this, but Rudy, at the same time, you have Core 20 skyrocketing to $100 plus expected value. Skyrocketing. So, <clears throat> usually this leads people to say, you know, send me messages saying that, Rudy, oh, well, this is obvious. You know, Theros, everybody opened it and bought it. And a lot of supply hit the market, and nobody liked Core 20 except you, because you're the only one pumping it and liked the set. And now the market is just distorted and having craziness. So that's where we're at, everybody. I don't want to focus on the other products and the Core stuff. That'll be another video today. Um, but I, I just mostly wanted to discuss about the Theros situation. Um, in my opinion, based on what I see happening, the Theros Beyond Death standard booster boxes, according to other stores and distributors, are selling just fine. It's not like they're not selling like a core set. I mean, they are selling very well at the higher up level. So it's not like the product's getting stagnant and just sitting in warehouses. That's not true. Um, which again, it's allocation period. So there's not a lot of product to really... It's not difficult to sell out of product. During this allocation period, you literally get... You know, stores are allocated very tiny amounts of products each week and make sure it's throttled and controlled to make sure the market is stable at release. So, yeah... That's, um, yeah, so, oh boy, um, it, it's because of the collector's boxes, look, I mean, I'm not going to lie and say it's not, you guys know it's because of the collector's boxes, I know it's because of the collector's boxes, when I did that first video, and all those mythics were showing up in the collector's boxes, and I made the video, and I was, after I filmed it, and I was uploading it, and I was sitting in the office chair, and I was going, that was a lot of mythics. Eh, probably just a fluke box and the public will just think I picked a good video to start off the series with. And then I opened the second video of collector boxes, which was box three and four, you know, two boxes per video. And all of a sudden, I was like, this is even more Mythics than the first video. And then by the time I did the third video of Theros Collector's Boxes, you know, I think it was the third or fourth video that ended up having, what was it, like 19 or 20 Mythics out of 24 packs? It, it started to get outrageous. And then the last video I just filmed, I think it was 11 Mythics out of 12 packs. Like, it's just, it's insane. So, I don't know what this means for the product, short term or long term. I can tell you right now, um, anybody who considered doing a mass box opening, or is in the process of doing a mass box opening, is going to completely shut it down and stop. If you already opened 10, 20, 50, 100 boxes, you're going to stop. Because if you're seeing this data and you're seeing these numbers, you will take a bath. You will get completely just, I'm talking the first time Rudy went to high school as a nerd with his magic cards and all the cool people laughed at me. The cool kids thought I was someone just nut, I was just a crazy nerd loser. Because, I mean, if you're, there's an expected value of 70, even $80 a box, and you chop off 20% for selling online, you're looking at netting about $65, $70 a box. And, you know, if you're netting $65 a booster box at release and you're paying as a store $78 a box, oh boy, I mean, you're going to lose a third of your money. And if you do that in 100 boxes or 200 boxes, you're going to lose thousands, if not tens of thousands, depending how deep you go. So if anyone who's aware of what's going on, and trust me, stores who do mass box openings and any individual looking to crack boxes of this and flip singles, they're going to be very well aware of this. Now, on the other side of the coin, anybody who's cracking collector's boxes and selling those singles, I don't think you're going to experience the same 30-40% decline in value because that's, that's what's causing the numbers to be skewed for the regular boxes. So, I don't, I don't know how this is going to settle out. I tell everyone the same thing lately. We have no track record. We have no history of how these type of products will age. This is a straight up gamble, everybody. Nobody knows. We have no history of collector's boxes, premium products based on a standard set at release, and then after release, they don't make any more of them. We have no data of five, 10, 20 year time horizons of how a product like this ages and what it does to the cards in standard, what it does long term to the single value, and of course, how the sealed boxes will age. If anyone, like even myself, I cannot tell you because I, I can make something up. You know, some of you all out there can make up a video or maybe post on the internet, but truly none of us know. That's the blunt reality. No, we, you have no data. You cannot guess without any track record. Somebody, wait, is the camera working?
All right, cool. I thought I was gonna lose you guys. We have, there's just no way to know. So for me to sit here and say, you know, look, everybody, uh, these, the Throne of Eldraine is the first collector's box. It's gonna go to 500 a box. You know, it probably will eventually, but it, if it takes 30 years, that's a terrible return. If it goes to 500 for a collector's box in two years, that's a great return. It's, the argument isn't, is the product going to go up if it's sealed? The argument is, what's the path it's going to take? That's the difference between an amateur Timmy and someone who really puts a lot of thought, removes all the emotions, and really just looks at the raw market. And in this scenario, like I said, these collector boxes, it's a crapshoot. I mean, you know, I tried, like, on the throne boxes, I kept 100 boxes. Because I want, and again, I, every once in a while I'm able to get a few extra boxes from some other just people, collections, and stores. But, you know, distributors don't have them. There's, there's not more being reprinted. You have to remember that. That's a huge variable. All new standard sets, like Ikoria, when it has Ikoria collector's boxes, and just like Theros, at release, all these collector's boxes hit the market. And that's it. There's no additional collector's boxes printed, restocked, reprinted six months later. It just doesn't happen. Well, I don't know. Wizards may change that in the future. Am I right? <sighs> so that's where we're at. Um, I guess my biggest concern on this whole thing, everyone... It's going to have to be the impact that all 3,000 local game stores, or 2,000, however many are left in business, you can't open any boxes yourself or do any mass box openings and sell singles with the standard boxes. Now, the collector's boxes, you probably can and still make money. And if that's the case... Our stores moving forward just going to crack a bunch of collector's boxes, get the goodies, and flip them at release. And people aren't going to mass produce or mass open the standard boxes. And if that happens, you're going to have a lot less demand for the standard boxes based on that theory. It's very strange. And at the same time, if that does happen, it's going to reduce how many collector's boxes stay in existence in the long run, since people were flipping, churning, and burning to flip and get that arbitrage money. I don't know. This is a really weird one. Um, I also think on a side effect, um, I, I, it's going to be very interesting to see if Wizards holds the allocation period for the standard boxes the full 60 to 70 days. My instinct is I bet they remove it early, assuming, assuming they have the product. Because, you know, like Throne, where they went through the holidays, and they are like, oh yeah, crap. Uh, we didn't really print and stock it in the warehouse, so now we have to reprint it, and there's a delay. And then all the stores went through the holidays around the country without boxes of Throne. So, of course, if they just do poor management and not stock the product, then it doesn't really matter either way. Because um, I know, I, I saw some information overseas where some smaller, different countries and parts of the world... Um, we're having some Theros Beyond Death standard booster box supply issues. But I don't think that's due to a record-breaking demand. I think that's due to just management and supply and logistics. There's a difference. you got to be careful not to confuse the two. So, I don't know, everybody. It's a funky little thing here. Um, I mean, the fact remains, the collector's boxes are not going to continue to be made. I think we only make a couple more sets with a collector's box, and I think Wizards discontinues it. I think, you know, I, I really do believe that. I think we're going down the same path as the, uh, as the Master Series, where it started off good, and then it slowly dripped lower, and the market anger, how do I say it, the market feedback or the market pushback started to grow, similar to the lottery cards. You know, when lottery cards were announced with BFZ and Oath, I was so excited. And then when I, they were announced with Kaladesh, I was excited. And then right before release at Kaladesh, Mark Rosewater and some official Magic Lab Coat people said that all future sets will have lottery cards. And that was the defining moment in modern Magic where everybody went, whoa, wait, 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 wait a minute. If every set is going to have 30, 40 special rare lottery cards, and there's four standard sets a year, and then, was it three, technically? Three, three to four, depending on the calendar. And it's like, wait a minute, you're going to... It, it scared the crap out of everybody. And I feel like that's the path we're headed now. 
It reminds me of lottery cards, reminds me of Master Series, reminds me of From the Vault, reminds me of Dual Decks. And uh, I think these collector boxes are going to be next. I think we're going to see, uh, we, we saw the throne, we got the Theros, Ikoria's next. Um, I don't know anything about Ikoria. I don't know if that's going to be a home run or garbage. Um, I think the collector's boxes for Zendikar will probably be a monster hit because it just has the word Zendikar. Historically, anything with the word Zendikar is extraordinarily successful. It has a home run track record. And again, they could screw that up. We don't know. Um, but I think moving into 2021, when I'm a little bit older, a little bit fatter, and have a little less hair, and you guys can make fun of me, I actually think by 2021, we're going to start to see the end of the, the collector's boxes. I think it'll have a series of about, I'm thinking five to eight sets. And uh, we're on number two. Aquaria will be three. Battle, the new Zendikar will be four. So I think maybe the first couple sets or blocks may have collector's boxes next year, but I think that'll be the tail end of the product life cycle. Um, because they're gonna, Wizards is going to start to notice a weakened sales possibly in the standard box that's being cannibalized by the collector's box. Which maybe that's okay to them. Maybe to Wizards that's okay because the profit margin per box on a collector's box is 10 times more profitable than a standard box. So, you know, there is a time, for those of you still watching this long video... There, there are times that even though we see what's happening, maybe internally, the margins in what Wizards has on their data with the profit and the raw sales, it still comes out better. Even with low expected value in the Theros beyond death and maybe lower sales after it comes off allocation, it's still acceptable because the collector's boxes, you know, when they sell, I don't want to get into print run on that, when they sell collector's boxes with a certain print run and, um, and a certain low to high print run range, and the money they're getting per box on that is equal to probably, oh my goodness, I would say probably the money Wizards gets is on one collector's box is probably equal to three standard boxes. So even if the sales of standard boxes are lower, the bottom line profit's probably still going to be higher even if top line sales are down. And I think, uh, at least as an investor or a shareholder in a publicly traded company, that's going to be very positive to Hasbro because they can spin it as they're running more lean, mean corporation machine. And that makes investors and share prices rise when you have healthier margins. So that's where I'm at, everybody. I know a little longer video than I thought we were going to do today, but really, really blown away by the Theros Beyond Death standard booster box expected value. Just absolutely, I've never seen anything like it. And I don't know if we're going to have one of the, it's going to rebound and grow moving forward because people are going to freak out and back away early. We have no idea how this is going to happen. You all do follow-up videos on this over the next, you know, 30, 60, 90 days. Maybe once a month we'll keep an eye on it. Um, but yeah, that that's that's where it's at. I mean, just, and I don't know. I, I truly don't know. So, and obviously, you know, you're going to see the comments and people are going to be saying, well, you know, end of magic, you know, print to oblivion, everything's going to go to end. And, and again, I, I've told you guys similar things. You know, we are entering a new era with flashy cards, Pioneer, vintage's toilet paper, local game stores have no business in the future, uh, Amazon, Wizards Direct, Secret Lairs, and th this is the future direction. And we can all be upset about it and kick and scream or we can all evolve with what Wizards is doing because we don't have a choice. Kind of a whole 1984 type of speech. But, you know, that's kind of that's kind of where the direction of the market is. And it's not that, you know, sealed investing is dead. Or other single card flipping or investing is dead. It's just we're going through a change. It's evolving to a new style and approach. It's never dead. It's never perfect. It's never the best or worst. It just evolves and moves as all sectors of economies around the world do so that's all i have today hope you guys learned something just be aware and just be careful uh with the overall very very low expected value of these standard 79.99 theros booster boxes uh the beyond death collector's boxes look like they're just kind of flatlined right now until the market figures out what to do with them uh we'll see but that's all i have thanks for watching and i hope you guys learned something today and uh go eat a taco <laughs>